Welcome to the Football Show, I'm Peter Martin. Alan Ruff and Lee McCulloch are here with me, ready to look back over European football and ahead to the Scottish Premiership fixtures. Here's what's coming up. Michael Beale told his Rangers side they have to give more than 7 out of 10 after an impressive Real Betis win. I explained that to the team at half-time, step over the line, commit to the game. Really commit, not half, not 7 out of 10, commit to the game, everybody. And Brendan Rodgers says Celtic's financial health is an indication of how well the club has run. It's great for the club, of course, it's, it shows the stability of the club, how well it's run. Stuart Kettlewell believes Rangers' clash this weekend will be his side's sternest test yet this season. I, I would suggest you that this one becomes possibly the sternest test in that run. Stephen Robinson wants St Mirren to put an early gap between themselves and Hearts this weekend. It's going to be a good occasion and as I say, we can confident in the knowledge that we can put a little bit of an early gap between us. Yeah, lots of tasty games to talk about coming up over the weekend. But of course, we like to look back on what's happened to Scottish clubs in European football. And last night, Lee at Ibrox, you watched it. Good win, good start for Rangers. Great win, uh, great start for for Rangers for the league campaign. Obviously in Europe, I thought they started the game relatively slowly. They had a chance early, maybe four or five minutes. Matondo didn't really believe in himself and uh, first half that came under the cosh a little bit um, they have did some good players like Esco won the Champions League five times um, so obviously they had quality in their team but second half showing I thought Rangers were, were the better team hit the post hit the bar so deserved the the three points in the end yeah um, Michael Beale wanted his players after uh, the first half that Lee mentioned there to really go out and have a go in the second half and I explained that to the team at half time, step over the line, commit to the game, really commit, not half, not seven out of ten, commit to the game, everybody. And and uh, I'm telling you, in that changing room there, it's, it's worth it tonight. It's just three points in this group. We've got two tough away games now. We'll enjoy tonight, but my focus is now Motherwell. <laughs> Yeah, um, and they went out in the second half and managed yeah. to do the business, yeah. albeit it was a scrappy goal. Yeah, but he seems to be been saying that for the last two or three months. I think he, he really believes that Rangers aren't too far away from clicking, you know, and he, he keeps saying that, you know, he wants more than 45 minutes here, he wants more than that, he keeps demanding of the players, but certainly results like that can only help. The confidence of the players going into the games on the back of results like that can only get better and better. Yeah, it's no surprise that we have uh, a good coefficient in Scotland because Rangers certainly have been flying the flag over a number of years. 23 wins, 6 draws and only 3 defeats in those Europa League matches they've played um, at home. It's, uh, it's some record that... Um and with the coefficiency, when you when you put in the final as well, getting to the final, it's it really is it's it's fantastic. And um, yes, and they carried it on again last night. So it's just if they can take that into their dom domestic forum, then we, we might have a more competitive. Uh, league this season Yeah uh, absolutely and of course uh, you on a regular basis on a Friday I might as well tell you right now you will be like a roller coaster it's up and down <laughs> that, that seat there Ruffy is McManus sack him keep him sack him <laughs> keep him isn't it yeah. as soon as you sit there you know what, you, you know what's coming well, that's how you know you know that you're going to read about it in the papers that's coming up <laughs> absolutely uh, well I think Michael Beale was well happy with the result uh, I don't think Manuel Pellegrini agreed with it. I don't remember really chances of goal that Rangers create in this game. One in the third or four minutes of the first 45 minutes and after that just a corner that they score. We have another clear three or four chances that their goalkeeper say very well. I am happy in the way we play, happy with the personality but this games you must score if you want to win. We didn't score and we lost. Yeah, let's have a look at the group now to see exactly where Rangers are placed after match day one. And uh, it's a good uh, situation for them. Three points, good start. Can they build on it? Can they get out of that group, Lee? Michael Beale certainly thinks that they should be looking to get out of this group because Sparta, Prague, Limassol and Batiste, and they've already got their first home points. Well, but, well Michael Beale said that before the game, I think, um, that he expects to to progress from the group stage. I think the, the Betis, Betis might be their strongest opponents in that group and now that they've beat them at home, they've got the last game of the campaign is away so they'll be wanting to be qualified before that. Uh, Sparta Prague obviously 
tough opposition, but I, I just feel like Rangers might have too much uh, for Sparta Prague when the games come around. And um, back to what Ruffy was saying there, are Rangers going to be clicking sometime soon? And if they do, I think they'll, they'll comf comfortably get the group. Yeah, we're going to talk about Rangers in uh, domestic issues just shortly, but uh, the other game that was taking place, and I can tell you coming up in uh, the not too distant future, we'll be going live to uh, the Stadium of Light um, because England Scotland is taking place uh, Nations League qualifier uh, between England and Scotland's women. And uh, I can tell you that Alison McConnell and Kerry Pollock will be there live for us uh, in the next few minutes. Um, let's look at Frankfurt 2, Aberdeen 1. It it was, it was looking as if Aberdeen were going to pull off a fantastic result. Yeah, I think they went about their business properly. We've been saying about Aberdeen, they haven't been particularly well organised defensively uh, this season, but I think they've got their act together last night. I thought they were going to get away with it, you know, but obviously that team had the, the home advantage. They did have some special players on their side, but I think in the whole, you know, I think the majority of people were saying, oh, this is going to be a backs to the wall, three or four nothing result. So I know they never took anything out of the game, but the encouragement would be the performance they put on in the night. Well, I was going to say that to you. At the end of the day, results are all that matter. They still haven't clicked the way. Barry Robson says it, it, it's just an indication of that they've showed they can compete at this level. Um, but you, you've still got to try and transfer that into some kind of momentum. Start off with a draw, start off with a win in, in the league. And they don't look like doing that at the moment. Yeah, but for, for me, it's it's competing at levels is winning <laughs> as well. And, yeah. and they're not, they don't seem to be doing that at the moment. The second bottom in the league domestically. I know it's early, I know it's really early, um, but but you just don't get, you don't really get that much time at uh, big clubs. And then you've got Ross County on on Sunday. Uh, that's, for me, that's a must-win game. If he doesn't win that, he's under severe pressure. Just been beat last uh, week for Hearts, um, who you could say is probably the biggest rivals for going for third. Started the, the league campaign off with a half-decent result, but they still get beat. And then coming into a massive game, um, I guess, against Ross County, who's who started the season pretty well. Said, Barry Robson could be under pressure soon. Yeah, let's have a look at that group to see exactly how Aberdeen stand in it. Uh, at the foot, they're used to that at the moment in the Scottish Premiership as well. HJK, Eintracht Frankfurt and Pyok, uh with a win as well. So uh, right now, uh, there's a lot of work to do for Aberdeen. I think more domestically than <coughs> worrying about any level that you occupy in European football. And just before we head to uh, Sunderland, Ruffy, uh, must talk about uh, Celtic because despite the the performance and the fact that they've got off to a poor start, uh, the fallout from that has all been about, well, look at the financial figures, you know, players that they should have been bringing in. The manager said he didn't get what he was looking for. Um, this is his quotes um, from obviously this week in yesterday's press conference. Um, no, no, I think if you ask any manager, they will always be wanting more, of course. But we work with the players that are here. I think every manager will tell you they wish they could have done one or two more bits of business. Now we are preparing already for the January window and the summer window. Well, by the January window, it could all be too late. Yeah, I think some of the Celtic supporters are believing that now. You know, I think uh, we've already discussed that even in our Premiership, we, we don't think Celtic are the finished article. And if you're not the finished article in our league, you're nowhere near the finishing article when you go into the Champions League. Yeah. And that was very evident in that game. I, I thought they were so far off the pace. I, I, I mean, I know that they're taking some stuff out of it. I, when I was watching it, it was as if it was last week's Saturday game. It was Celtic versus Dundee. And I thought Celtic were Dundee. They were just sitting in. They were or, they were organised. Yeah. They were sitting in. They weren't going to get turned over. But they didn't look as if they were going to get into the game. Yeah. And for me, that, watching it, I, I couldn't see. I could see two wide guys. Kyogo, no supply at all. Nothing coming in for the wide areas. He was just running about, chasing down uh, centre-halves and trying to nick it. And nearly nicked it. But for me, it was the goal, the first goal. You know, everybody's going on about Joe Hart. And I think Joe Hart's honest enough to say he could have done a lot better. But in this day and age, when all I hear about is, you know, we have technical uh, analysis of corners for, corners against, free kicks for, free kicks against. Who put Kyogre in that wall? 
Who put the wheeze guy on the park in the middle of a defensive wall? Yeah, I, I take your point, Ruffy, but I have to say, I think, you know, from my point of view, I'm looking at it, the guy who's taking it is a lefty Lee. He's going to come across his body and he's going to look and try and get it up and over the wall. Hart's too far over to the he near post, Ruffy. Too far. And he's got he's got history of that. Yeah, he's got a step too far. But in, in fairness, if you've got a bigger guy in the wall and he's not going to jump out the road, the guy didn't have to go up and over the wall. He just actually went through Kyogo. Yeah, but you're surely as a goalkeeper, you're going to have to say to yourself, what if I've got a really yeah. good... What if I've got, a, what if I've got a, a, the Ward Prowse and I know he's going to get it up and over the wall. I've got to account for that. You must be able to account for a player. But that's what I'm saying. I'm sure if he, if he's honest enough, he'll hold his hands up and say he was a step away from it. You yeah. know, he can't get away from it. That, I think he did, quality. didn't he? He came out after the game. Yeah. I mean, most, goal, and most goalkeepers will know he aye. could have done better. And he'll, he'll admit he, he should... A, a goalkeeper who has quality has got to get near that. Yeah, you're looking at it right now. I mean... Celtic revealed profits of 40.7 million. They've got 72.3 million in the bank. Uh, I mean, the figures are amazing. Uh, 119.9 million compared to 88.2 the previous year. There's the profit, year-end cash in the bank. Um, and it's an increase in revenue due to, of course, Champions League involvement, Australia, retail sales, gain on player sales. And there's more player sales to be put in by the time you get to the January uh, figures as well. And compensation, of course, for Ange Postacoglu heading to Tottenham Hotspur. Um, Brendan Rodgers keen to defend that situation by saying, you know, it's an indication of how well Celtic are run. It's not for me to talk about now. I'm only thinking about the game. It's great for the club, of course. It's It shows the stability of the club, how well it's run, you know, how, the, how well the board have done over, uh, over numbers of years. Uh, the strategy clearly works. So, uh, yeah, but... For me, my job is to look after the football team. I think he's in the same movie, but with a weaker team. It's all positive for Celtic. All, all the figures, everything, everything for the fans, great for the board, great. Yeah, hold on a minute. You can you can get the, you can get seventy million in the bank, but one Celtic fan put a brilliant tweet out when they were two 0 yeah. down. Bring on the bank balance. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? I get it, and I, I think I think Brendan's a little bit frustrated. At that as well, and that's why he's he's no one to cover it too much. I, I think well, we all sat here and said when he first came in, he's he's only coming in here because he's got an X amount to sp to spend and bring in some t maybe two three big hitters, and it didn't really happen. And I think he's shown signs of that that yeah. he's a little bit frustrated. Which he'll be thinking what goods in the money in the bank when we can be getting more success potentially in Europe if, if they acted a little bit sooner. Yeah, absolutely. OK, uh, we will discuss Celtic in domestic action uh, over the weekend coming up very shortly. But we're going to quickly switch our attention to what can only be described at the moment as sunny Sunderland. That's all I'm going to say to you, Ruffy, uh, because it looks OK at the moment where uh, Kerry Pollock and Alison McConnell are on their travels because Scotland are taking on England at the Stadium of Light. It's a Nations League opener. Um, and I think this is going to determine who's going to qualify for Europe. 2025. Is it safe to say right now, Kerry, that it's all rosy in the Scotland Garden because Fran Alonso's got a new deal and uh, uh, and everything looks good? Yeah, Peter, that's correct. Pedro Martinez has signed a new deal until 2027 and has said, well, certainly be looking ahead to this match against England, but what challenge they've got ahead of them last? Yeah, I don't think he could have got any harder to kick off your campaign against the, the World Cup finalists away from home, the reigning European champions. I think if Scotland were to take anything from this, it would be seen as a massive positive ahead of this new inaugural Nations League campaign. I think, uh, realistically speaking, I think they'll be pleased if they if they get out of this with, with minimum damage. I think the last thing you would want is a morale-sapping heavy defeat, but I think they know the magnitude of the challenge that lies ahead this evening. Yeah, really looking forward to it, of course. Um, what are our chances? We've already played England in the men's section um, and it didn't go quite according to plan. And I wonder what you two uh, think of this one. Yes, yeah, it's going to be a big challenge, Peter. Uh, England have beaten Scotland in their last 12 meetings on home soil. They've only lost two games under their 39 games with Serena Vigman in charge. But Scotland do have some great young talent, especially in a Watson list. Yeah, I think there have been signs there that have been encouraging in the aftermath of that failure to make it to the World Cup, that playoff 
final against the Republic of Ireland was desperately disappointing. I think Scotland didn't do themselves justice. I think there's been a lingering feeling from that that they didn't acquit themselves particularly well. They've lost just one game since then, but of course this is where it matters now. You're going into a competitive campaign and I think this is where you'll be judged and this is where you'll see, uh, should Scotland be, are they equipped to be back at competing at major tournaments? Well, these are the games that will show just how far apart they are from that. Pedro Bartina says as well this week, Peter, that he feels his side, despite going up against the World Cup runner-ups, feels his side are definitely able to take on anyone. Brilliant. Enjoy the game. Um, and of course, Kerry and Alison will keep us right up to date uh, with reports on PLZ Soccer's social media channels. I had uh, Fran Alonso as the Scotland manager there, by the way. I have to tell you, uh, Pedro Martinez Losa, <laughs> my full apologies to him. Signed a new deal, though, Ruffy. Absolutely magnificent. Uh, a little bit of stability. <clears throat> uh, certainly, the women respond to him and what he's doing. And as Alison and Kerry highlighted there, you know, there are promising signs for Scotland's women's team. Yeah, they were extremely disappointed not qualifying for the, the World Finals. You know, they just missed out on that. I thought that was a big chance to progress the women's football here. But they've now been given another one. There's another tournament coming up. Unfortunately, they're drawn against one of the favourites, you know, to win it. You know, so it'll be a tough game for them tonight. I think the positive thing is that most of our Scotland's women team now are playing abroad. Uh, they're playing in different countries. They're playing down in England playing against a really top class you know, opposition, so that should benefit them in the long run. But this will be a massive test for them tonight. OK, um, you can give us your thoughts in the message section below on how you think Scotland will fare. And also, let's not forget, uh, if you hit the subscribe button on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel, you'll get all the football news, men's and the women's game as well. We've got the women's football show uh, that's out every week with Kerry, Alison and a special guest every week for you uh, to look forward to. We also have Straight Talk, where I get one-to-ones with people from football, entertainment, right across... Uh, politics as well, all coming up and I think there's a few that really will interest you in straight talk and let's not forget as well as the football show we have the journals um, where four journals just sit here and argue with each other, it's the only way I can sum it up, um, so that's all to look forward to, in the football show Lee McCulloch is here with us alongside Alan Ruff and from European football to domestic issues and everybody's back to uh, the game's now on Saturday and Sunday. Livingston against Celtic. Uh, Livy didn't have a great record last year against Ange Postacoglu Celtic. They they lost all three games and they'll be looking to try and make amends against Brendan Rodgers Celtic. How do you think Celtic will fare coming off the back of that disappointment? Well, I think if you if you ask any team, no, nobody likes going down to Livingston. They, they don't get like, they don't like going down because, first of all, the surface, they, they always say, oh, Livingston are a hard team to play against, you know, they, everything's rushing about and everything. But I think now teams are beginning to handle it and I think people are beginning, the players themselves are bit, know what's coming ahead when they turn up, you know, and, and nine times out of ten, the bigger size will win the games. And, and I think Celtic, although it will be very, very difficult early on, I think at the end of the day, the quality should come through at the end of it. Do you believe that the clubs now are stronger in closing the gap? Because we're now looking at Celtic and Rangers and then usually a 20 point, 10, 15 difference between that and third place. It's it's quite demoralising at times. Yeah, I, I don't believe they're getting any closer, no. I, I think Rangers and Celtic are getting are bigger and better and their budgets are getting bigger and better. Look at the financial figures that Celtic have just posted there. Um, no day in the league can, can compare to that and that will only get bigger and better, in my opinion. So the gap will certainly not get smaller. Yeah, um, and it's uh, sometimes we can be insular in our thinking, Ruffy, when we look at it and say, well, you know, it's a league with only two teams constantly winning everything. There's been, obviously, over the last decade or so, the odd League Cup and Scottish Cup win uh, for clubs on a regular basis. But, you know, you only have to look at Europe. I mean, Bayern Munich have won the, the Bundesliga 11 times in a row. The big clubs are, are almost just unbeatable now in certain terms. Yeah, I think the only thing we're looking for is a challenge. You know, we're looking for a wee bit uh, of excitement, you know, particularly when Rangers or Celtic go to Tynecastle, or Leicester Road, or Pataudry. And, and these teams are putting up a good show, you know, and, and giving the neutrals, you know, something to hang on to. But I, I agree with Lee. I think at the end of the day, it's just 
too long a season, too many games to maintain that consistency. And nine times out of ten, the two of them will eventually draw away. Yeah, absolutely. Um, what about Livingston? Uh, let's find out from Kerry Pollock, who caught up with David Martindale on this game. This weekend, Livingston take on Celtic here at the Tony Macaroni and the Cinch Premiership. And despite recent criticism of the current champions not being at their best, the Livingston boss David Martindale says he isn't buying any of those comments. 11 v 11, I don't think he's seen any defensive frailties at all in his Celtic lineup. So I get what people are coming from. I've seen it in the media, but I'm not sure I'm buying into that myself. Livingston hosts Celtic here on Saturday and then head to Ibrox to face Rangers in the League Cup on Wednesday. And the Levy boss says there's only one person happy with the order of his side fixtures. We put a lot of physical and mental energy into the previous two fixtures because they two opponents demand demand that you're at the top of your game. You've got to put a lot into the game. You don't get anything for nothing. So Stephen McLean's probably the winner here. <laughs> Um, but aye, listen, it is what it is, I've got a squad um, and we're more than capable, in my opinion, we're more than capable of getting something on Saturday, getting something on um, the Wednesday and going up to McDermott Park and trying to take three points as well. So. Can Livingston take advantage of Celtic's Champions League defeat or will the Parkhead side extend their lead at the top? Yeah, uh, Livingston, it's going to be, it, it's tough for him, I think he's going to, uh, my gut feeling is he's, he's going to be one of the teams that's going to struggle this season, unless suddenly there's a twist round about, you know, Christmas time, January, where he has good news of the board stops fighting mm -hmm. and investment comes in. Yeah, I mean, that's what he'll be hanging on to, he'll, he'll be thinking that January's not that far away and he just needs to keep up picking points like he did, he did last week, you know. It's amazing when you start picking up points against teams that you know you're going to be round about. So I don't see them in a bottom three fight, I see them just under the top six, you know, and I think uh, if they can keep Bruce Anderson obviously scoring goals, scoring goals is a, the biggest problem for all these teams down there, but Bruce Anderson will always come up with something. Mm, Lee, what's your take on Livingston? <laughs> I feel a wee bit sorry for David. Um, I, I think they'll cash in and Nubly in uh, the January window. I think they'll, they'll they'll take any bid that gets put forward. Um, hard working team. I think it'll be a difficult game for Celtic coming off the back of Europe, but um, I, th I don't I don't think they'll be in any threat of going down this season. Yeah. Okay. Rangers against Mullow. This is a tasty one um, because obviously Rangers. Uh, now going to play against Motherwell off the back of that game against Real Betis. Will there be elements of fatigue or not? The one thing that they've got as a problem is there's no Danilo. We know all about his um, a situation after picking up that fracture. Nico Raskin out until after the international break with a calf injury. And Todd Cantwell already sidelined. Um, it looks as if... And Kieran Dowell will be back after the League Cup game. So that's a quick summation of what they have Available and not available. Yeah, well, they knew at the start of the season, <coughs> or Michael would have known at the start of the season, that there's going to be injuries, there's going to be suspension, and that's when the squad comes into it. You could argue they, they players were definitely out during the week um, at the, the, the first uh, European League game, and they succeeded. So, Mother will be a very tough test, apart from last week. Real informed team, including the tail end of last season as well. So I think I think it's a great opportunity for Rangers to get a little bit of momentum going. Last night helped uh, w the buy-in with the fans. They got the, got the crowd going again. Um, I think it's a good opportunity for them uh, to to keep on with the momentum. But if they drop points, then it gets another story. Yeah, absolutely, and that's <laughs> and that's Almost where you'll be you'll be up. I don't down. know something something different today with this seat. I yeah, absolutely. I'm feeling it. You'll be up and down. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Eventually, you'll say something that uh, you know will suffer the wrath <laughs> from someone. Believe me, it's it's notorious uh, for that seat. Well, what about Mother? Well, Stuart Kettlewell watched Rangers uh, last night. He was at Ibrox to see them win the game by a goal to nil. Um, so this is what he made of them. I'm here at Fir Park where Stuart Kettlewell's men are preparing for their Scottish Premiership fixture against Rangers. They will travel to Ibrox on Sunday going into the game with eight days of preparation. If you compare that to Rangers who took on Real Betis last night, it is quite the advantage. Well, Stuart Kettlewell revealed today that he was in attendance at Ibrox last night and was full of praise for Michael Beale's men. The amount of options that Rangers have got, I was there last night. 
really impressive result. Um, I think it, Rangers would probably acknowledge it took them a little bit of time to get going in the game, but once they did, I think they were thoroughly deserving of their victory, in my opinion, against the top side, against a very, very good team. Um, so we have to brace ourselves for that. We have to make sure that um, we go one and have a, a real good defensive organisation, good structure like I thought we did again on, on, on Saturday against St Mirren. Stuart Kettlewell has been the manager of Motherwell since February of 2023 and his side are still undefeated away from home in the league. But Kettlewell believes that this weekend could be his side's sternest test yet. It's, it's a great accolade. It's a, it's a real good run of form. But I, I would suggest you that this one becomes possibly the sternest test in that run. Well, this has got a cracking. I, I think this is a, a cracking game of the weekend, Ruffy, because yeah. if you want to look at it, the Motherwell fans love to talk about it. Uh, they're in third position. They're only three points off Celtic and they're a point ahead of Rangers. Yeah, they certainly are. Uh, I think they were unfortunate last week, you know, taking something out of the game. You know, St Man got the, the win and they have been playing well, but uh, I'm going to go against all that stuff that was just getting talking about there. Oh, right. Uh, I, I, I think Michael Beale believes that this Rangers team aren't far away from getting a, a big result. I think the difference between this game and last week's game against St Johnson, they were going into that game with a lot of pressure. People talking about the manager being sacked and I don't think the players performed particularly well, but now they have a big European result against them. And I, I think they'll go out tomorrow with the fans behind them, the players uh, believing that they're just about to turn the corner. And, and I think they're going to beat Motherwell quite con con convincingly. Yeah, well, was the other thing that Lee won't be aware of, and it's just all down to basically your understanding of words comfortable and convincingly. convincingly. What is convincingly? 4-0? Convincingly it's is convincingly 4-0. 3-0. 3-0. 3 Okay. Um, <clears throat> the reason why I, I mention that, Lee, is because obviously um, there was a situation a few years ago on the programme where he said if if um, Gordon Strachan was to lose by three goals to nil in a game, then he had to go as Scotland manager. And lo and behold, we lost 3-0 at Wembley. And I, I, came on, I came on the next programme <laughs> looking for a resignation or something from him or, you know, an opinion about Strachan must go. But it didn't matter. <laughs> he was he just avoided it so it's a convincing 3-0 yes. win what is convincing for you or is it going to be tighter I think it'll be tighter I think uh, Mother will, will be well organised I think Rangers actually pose a threat at set plays believe it or not I think uh, this season that they've looked pretty good for set plays they got their goal the other night from it but I think it start tight the fans will help I'm going for a for a convincing 1-0 yeah, conv <laughs> you see the levels of what convincing <laughs> means. Um, yeah, I, I think it might be a 2-1 for Rangers on this one. Uh, St Mirren against Hearts, equally tasty. Um, so our man Adam Binney was out there to see what Stephen Robinson makes of it. I'm at the St Mirren training centre this morning to speak to manager Stephen Robinson ahead of this weekend's Scottish Premiership clash with Hearts at the Smyzer Stadium. Now, St Mirren are the form sides in the league. They're undefeated in all of their opening five league fixtures and haven't lost in any of their nine matches across all competitions this season. And quite rightfully, manager Stephen Robinson believes that his side can take on anyone. A brilliant challenge, you know, a game we look forward to. It's um, it's going to be packed as well, as, as, as well, so it's um, going to be a great atmosphere. Hearts will bring a fantastic crowd over as well. But um, a game I feel we can take to, to Hearts as well. You know, we're the team that's in form, so we don't fear anybody, but certainly um, a lot of respect for the, the players they have and their manager. Stephen Robinson is also well acquainted with the man who will be in the opposite dugout this weekend, Stephen Naismith. I'm hoping to see him up in Stuart and today and trying to um, pick his brains when I'm walking the dog to be fair because he lives in Stuart as well. So, um, no, and it's not, it'd be a tough game. Hearts will come and give us, I would imagine, the utmost respect as we will them. And uh, we're looking forward to it. You know, it's, it's going to be a good occasion. And as I say, we win confident in the knowledge that we can put a little bit of an early gap between us, and, and that's our incentive. Um, I, I've seen him, I think I've given him a wave in his car. I, um, which I'm trying to get the the free electric up at the Rose Riley um, the, the, uh, <laughs> the sports centre so I'm parking in, plugging in, getting the free electric but I'm not sure he needs a free electric either Yeah, I wonder who's going to win that battle, Rafi <laughs> and that's just for the cars Yeah, it certainly is uh, again, I'm going to go against the, the, the grain here you know, obviously listening to all the stats there in favour in St Myrne I thought St Myrne were fortunate last week to get the win uh, I was impressed by Hearts and I'm going to stick with Hearts in this one. I, I'm just going to, it's going to be a really, really tight game. But uh, I think Hearts have got the momentum now with that tremendous win last week. So 
I'm afraid the St Mirren uh, bubble is going to be burst tomorrow as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, um, don't bother actually trying to see if Ruffy's on Twitter. He knows not how to work it, so you can't offer any abuse if you live in the Paisley <laughs> area. Uh, and he doesn't know how to work his Facebook. His wife <laughs> operates that for him. And if he does operate text, it's very, very brief. Are you playing tennis? Yes. <laughs> so there's no elaborating. So if you ever get a chance to contact him, you're going to have to see him face to face about this. But I, I look at the St Mirren side, even if you're not playing well, and you're winning games. Only Montrose have managed to beat them. That was an opening League Cup fixture. But they had their highest finish in the league in 38 years last season. He's got something. And he's got a team with players that he wants. And he, he, there's something about Stephen Robinson. I think there's a, no disrespect to St. a bigger job somewhere down the line. Yes, I think he's proven. He proved himself uh, motherable as well with the cup finals he got into. And, um, yes, he's took St. Mirren on to another level as well. Um, fantastic start to the season. He's clearly a very good manager. That, that's it's crystal clear. But I'm going to go with Ruffy on this weekend. I think Hearts, no European football now, so they're just concentrating on, on the domestic scene. Good win last weekend. They'll take a lot of confidence for that. For probably what's been a little bit of a sticky start for, for Hearts and, and Stephen and all the managerial changes and roles. Now now there's clarity. I believe they'll, they'll go on a run now and I think Hearts will start closing that gap but then start uh, creating a gap of their own. Oh, we've got, a, we've got a difference of opinion here. Ruffy and Lee sticking together. Well, let's hear what uh, Stevie Naismith uh, has to say about the game against St Mirren. He certainly won't be talking about cars, will he? I'm here at Tyne Castle Park speaking to Stephen Naismith ahead of his side's fixture against St Mirren. They will travel to Paisley to take on an undefeated St Mirren side and Stephen Naismith was full of praise for the role that Stephen Robinson has done. I think the way the managers put his stamp on the team plays a big part in it. The, every player, I've watched a lot of them this season and every player that's within their squad understands their role. In a, a fair few of the games that I've watched, there's been different personnel in each position but what they do, what they're expected to do doesn't change. Um, their managers get real experience in Scotland and I think that shows. It has been a whirlwind of a start to the season for Hearts. They have two wins, two losses and one draw. But the main message for Stephen Naismith today was about consistency from his side. We need to, over this period, this season, next season and beyond, continue to improve and grow and, and, and look back and say, yes, we're a better team now than we were. We're a more consistent team than we were. Yeah, well, we'll judge that as we see over the uh, winter period as well. But I'm looking at them. Craig Halkett could return at the beginning of November. And I'm praying, Ruffy, that that boy gets a run where he's, yeah. he's free from injury because he adds a bit of real stability at the back for the Hearts. Yeah, I think it was really noticeable with Hearts when uh, Craig Gordon and him got injured around about the same time. There was a dip in form uh, from Hearts, you know, basically in the defence when you lose two players of that quality. So he's a player where we're all talking about, Scotland centre-half. Unfortunately, every time we started shouting for the rooftops, he got an injury. So yeah, you want to see somebody who's had these bad injuries doing particularly well when they come back. Yeah. You liked him when you were working with him? Yes. Fantastic pro. Very good player. Leader. Leadership. Great trainer. And Scotland squad. And then he, he breaks down. He's just been so unlucky with injuries. Um, but I... I do believe he's got the mentality to come back and, and make an impact again. Yeah, okay. What are you going for, Ruffy? I'm going to go for... I think I went for a 2-1. Two, 2-1 one. Two, one to Hearts? Yes. Okay. I'm going to go 2-1 St Mirren. 2-1 Hearts. There you are. Um, we'll be texting each other the minute the game is finished. It'll be an interesting time at Easter Road because I'm sure the fans who make their way there, and let's hope there's lots of them, uh, to cheer Nick Montgomery. It's his first uh, match in charge of Hibs at home, and they take on St Johnson. And I suppose everybody will be thinking, couldn't get a better way to make your debut than against the St Johnson side that just look as if they couldn't buy a win. Yes, I think Hibs... Nick Montgomery's first game, they started to come and it was, went 2 nothing up, chucked away two ridiculously bad goals. So he'll be looking to put his stamp on the team with a full week's training. Uh, first home game against, as you're saying, like a, a team that's that's really struggling to find form now and get a result. Um, 
I, I'm going for Hibs convincingly win this one. Yeah, I mean, it's a strange situation, uh, Ruffy. Uh, you've got Hibs looking to try and, you know, well, we're about to find out as the new manager comes in what his style is, whether there's a, a little bit of Ange Postecoglou about him or whether he's got his own style because he likes to invest in youth. Mm -hmm. He certainly likes to invest in, the, the, you know, the high press, entertaining football and gives people a chance. So... We could be on the verge of seeing something different, only time will tell over the next couple of months. But St Johnson for me are in this situation where you can't keep changing managers. Um, I think, you know, when they get rid of Callum Davis and I thought yeah. it was a I thought it was a mistake. They should have stuck with somebody who could have maybe been able to ride it out. Stephen McLean's in and I'm looking I'm saying to myself, unless there's a buyout there, that's another yeah. club like <coughs> Livingston who are teetering. Well, from the outside looking in, it look it looks that way. You know, they, they, they've got no strikers of any note who's uh, coming up the goals to win your games. And I'm sure Lee's been in the situation as well. I've been in it as well. But when you're on that kind of run and you're coming up in the game and you're sitting in the dressing room and you're sitting there and looking around a bit, who's the guy or who are the guys who are going to take us out of this position that we're in? And unfortunately for St Johnson, is now there doesn't seem to be that many people who are going to grab the game by the scruff of the neck. I think it's going to be a long, long season for them. It'll be interesting to see when the January window comes, if he gets the opportunity to bring some more players in. But at this moment in time, they're just going to have to go to games and just sit in and, and see what happens. And see if they can nick something somewhere here and there. But... Uh, it's going to be a long, long season for them. Yeah, no Nicky Clark available for them. And again, you're looking at, <coughs> you start to look to the strikers and say, can someone just dig us out of this? And amazingly, when you get away from the bottom end of the table, as you know, sometimes clubs are lucky enough to have a striker or someone who adds 10, 15 goals, which is the difference between them, bottom relegation and then into the mid-table well, area. I think... Nicky Clark is that guy that that his movement around the box, the the so called fox in the box, but he's injured and uh, and Ruffy spot on. You you're sitting in the dressing room saying, if someday's a shot, is it going to come off the striker's back and go in? Is it just going to hit off him again? Have we got any of these guys? These guys that seem to be lucky in front of goal and they haven't, and they're and they're conceding goals and it's not looking uh, very bright for them. I think that they'll need to invest in the team. Uh, come the next uh, window that's available and and back the manager. There's no point changing the manager again. Yeah. Um. They've not won a league game this season. They're, they're under pressure already. Uh, they just need to get to the next window and, and hope they're still in touch. 2 0 Hibs. 3 0 Hibs. 2 0 Hibs. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, St John's in the bottom of the table and just above them on the same points, Aberdeen. They're at home against Ross County. We've already looked at uh, Aberdeen's better performance in European football against Eintracht Frankfurt, but still ultimately ending in defeat. Is there enough in, in the signs there that Barry Robson can get something out of them to get past a, a Ross County side that we all believe will not be in the bottom end of last season? Yeah, I think this, this will put Barry Robertson a, a, a learn his corn. He's got to convince the players that the performance they put in against I, Eintracht will be the the start kick they need, you know, and you'll have to believe, get them to believe that uh, they're on the right road. But uh, Ross County are going to be, you know, a hard nut to crack. You know, we saw that uh, last week. I, I do believe they went to Petodre last year and I think they got a win. So that'll always be in the back of the mind. But these Aberdeen supporters uh, are, are losing patience, particularly at home. You know, we know they've got a good travelling support, but home is where you have to convince the fans that you're on the right road and, and it, it has to be a win. It must be a win for Barry Robson to kick on the season. Yeah, um, I think mid-table for Malky Mackay's side, and they certainly look far better than they did last season, albeit he had injuries, and he's been able to yeah. juggle with the transfer market again. Another good manager, I think he's, he's learned, maybe get a fright from what happened last season, get away with one of the playoffs. Uh, and they've started the season much more convincingly and I don't think they're going to be there or thereabouts down there um, come the end of this season. But getting back to the game in hand, I, I'm with Ruffy. Th this game, this game's massive for Barry Robson. Um, you, <coughs> you look at, the, the, they're in European, they've guaranteed the, the money for the club. 
Yes, victims of their own success, but they've not, they've not started domestically, not started well. Let's go back to last season. Robbie Nielsen lost his job for be, being in a Euro, Europa uh, conference run, getting that over with, dropped from third place to fourth place. Aberdeen are sitting second bottom in the league at the moment. Yes, it's still early days, but they need to start picking up points. Or the, the fans are going to start really turning and, yes. and asking questions. Isn't it amazing how, you know, Lee's pointing out a situation which ultimately led to, you know, Robbie and, and you and uh, the backroom team um, being removed from their positions, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. You look at Aberdeen, they're in a worse position. I mean, the sack for going down out of the, yeah. the top three. Yeah, but I mean, Barry Robson obviously coming in after having a good end to the season. You know, the owners uh, had to believe in he was doing something right. I think that'll give him a wee bit longer. That'll give the, a wee, the board maybe a wee bit longer. But we know as soon as supporters start losing faith, they, they are the ones that uh, generally get somebody removed. Are we uh, losing the plot? Uh, broadcasters, radio, television, written press, are we losing the plot and almost, you know, buying into this, I don't know, new strategy, new belief that if you don't turn it around in five or six games, you should be getting the bullet? Are we are we actually culpable the same as everyone else and saying, well, you know, by the way, get him out. This is September, we're already no, talking no, about him being no, under I, pressure. I'm, not, I'm, I'm not saying he's under, he knows he's under pressure. You know, but I'm not saying getting them out. All I'm saying is supporters generally, you know, are the ones that uh, force the issue. Uh, I would like to think uh, they'll remember the kind of stuff he gave them at the end of last season. That they were playing well, they were getting good results and moving up the league. So, yeah, he, he's, he's got to be justified more and more time. OK, uh, Dundee against... Did, we, did you give me a prediction there? 2-0 uh, Aberdeen. 2 nothing to Aberdeen. one nothing North County. Okay, and I'm going to go 1-1. One, one. It's a bad seat. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm controversial. I'm You've been, controversial by the way, today. can I tell you something? It's taken about three or four weeks. We always go through a test, Ruffy and I, and we just we, we usually wait three or four weeks to see if you're going to actually say anything. Um, and you've started to come into your... It's the first time I've seen you with your studs on. Um, do you know what I mean, yeah. um, Ruffy? Because I, I thought he was just going to kind of lapse into that um, bland, I'm saying nothing, but he's starting to get a wee bit of edge about him. Um, I forgot sake I hope Michael Beale doesn't go on a losing run because you're going to have <laughs> you're going to have to offer an opinion don't worry about being banned that happens to the best of us <laughs> Dund Dundee against Kilmarnock Ruffy um, it's a two guys who know each other well I wonder I wonder what happens when you've you've literally spent you know a huge amount of your managerial career with your assistant you know each other inside out and the team talk must be listen this is the way Derek's going to play today and by the way Tony's going to do this yeah, I think it'll go along that kind of line, you know, that uh, it'll be interesting to see the two of them touch line, you know, I'm sure as soon as a football uh, game starts, everyone goes out the window. I'm sure there will be a confrontation at some time during the game, but at the end of the day, the two of them are professional enough to be in the game long enough to whatever one wins or loses, they'll shake hands and still be pals, you know, but uh, I think this is a, a, a really tough one. Of all the games, this is the toughest one to call for me. I keep saying, you know, Kamalik need to get that win away from home to get that off their back. You know, they were a good comeback last week. And I think Dundee at home will be, will be hard to beat. You know, so I'm sitting on this fence on this one and I'm going to go one each. Yeah, oh, interesting one there. Um, it just shows you how the changing times for managers and the amount of money that they have available for them. 20 years ago, this very day, um, Champions League winner Fabrizio Ravanelli signed for Dundee. I'm just going to say that again to you, just to show you how mad Scottish football has become at times. 20 years ago, Ravanelli was playing. You had Kanija at Dundee, yeah. uh, Fabian Caballero, who was a fantastic player, Georgie Nimzadze, Craig Burley. And the great thing about these boys is are still th uh, they're all waiting to still get the pay that, that, they, were pro <laughs> that they were promised <laughs> from that previous board. <laughs> Nobody crazy knows. Crazy days, wasn't yeah. it? Real crazy days. It was great to see those players ah, in, wasn't brilliant. it? You know? Brilliant times. I mean, who'd have thought uh, Kanija in a Dundee and then a Rangers jersey? Know. Ravanelli. Yeah, I mean, it's outrageous, isn't it? I know. I mean, there was a period there where the Dundee fans must have been like, oh, we're in heaven. <laughs> what, what, no money? Fire on. <laughs> this, is, this is magnificent, they isn't come, it? They come quickly crashing down after that, though, didn't they? I think the club went in a bit of trouble. <laughs> Absolutely. Jim, Jim Duffy told, told a good story about who was, who was the owner of the game? Was it Dixon? 
Was Dixon yeah, there? yeah, that's his uh, name, yeah. He said he went into him pre-season and he said, uh, we don't have enough balls for the pre-season. And he said, just leave it with me, son, I'll sort that out. He went up to the local garage and bought 20 balls out of the garage. They <laughs> <laughs> plastic. <laughs> he brought them down to the training. And a clue. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. The changing times and, of course, uh, you know, for all the highs of watching some of these great players and, uh, any, I must admit, there must be somewhere, quite a lot of houses in Dundee, you're in a council house and you walk in and there's the signature Ravenelli in a shirt. It's <laughs> got to be in a frame there, hasn't it's it? Got it's, got brilliant. Be, it's got to be. And, and with that in mind, with Dundee and Kilmarnock, it's at Dundee. I'm going to go Dundee to get a 2-1 win in this one, Ruffy. What about you? I win one each. Some story into it with the managers. Uh, Team-wise, I think I'm going to go one each as well. Yeah? Yes. Okay. Um, Celtic coach uh, Darren O'Dee. Uh, looks as if he's been approached by Inverness Cali Thistle uh, to try and get them back on track. Of course, Billy Dodds sacked. Uh, uh, and again, as we talk about managers who suffer the wrath, it, it's not a great run since the start of the season for Inverness. Billy can't hide that. I like him, I've got a lot of time for him um, and you know I'd love to have seen them stick by him because mid-table, he had them in the playoffs the previous season, he got them to a Scottish Cup final, surely there was some credit in the bank. The unfortunate thing is that the board said that they, they didn't feel as if he was getting enough out of the players that he had available to him. Yeah, that's a lesson to everybody in the game isn't it? You know, when you're, when you're at a club and you, you give them success like getting to a cup final, you know, it, you should get a wee bit of leeway. You should be. I mean, Inverness shouldn't be getting the cup finals with the budgets that they've got. And the manager has done particularly well to get there. But uh, I think we all know in the game, this is a perfect example, is when you're up there, enjoy every minute of it because you know it's going to come crashing down any minute. Yeah. Can you see the other side of it, though? When Just as you're talking about that, there's, there's no... You don't get any longevity. You don't get any thanks for it. So can you see when managers actually jump to other clubs when given the opportunity right away so there's no loyalty for both sides is there no but that's life i mean no, no, life, I, I life is you want to you you, all, you know whether it's managers and i give you Ange postacoglu um because quite simply when the dream job comes up i actually thought he might have looked and thought and somebody said something significant to me in midweek which just jogged my memory back to him leaving for tottenham and it's quite simply you know with managers you want to better yourself you want to make them the step up yep. i thought Ange postacoglu might have stayed to get a better set of results in the champions league and because he's such a forthright manager he must have gone into the board and said by the way to do what we need to do i need this amount of money mm -hmm. now at that point the the speculation could be that the board said no this is what's happening and he realized and thought well Yep. The Tottenham job, get me out of here, I'm on my way to Tottenham if it comes up or any other job of, you know, in the English Premier League because of him winning the treble. Um, and of course, the other thing which I think a lot of people will have looked at and been impressed with is the way for about 60 minutes they played against Real Madrid, the style of football mm -hmm. they were playing. So, but again, you know, you move when the circumstances sometimes yeah. are right for you. Exactly. I get that. I was just, I was just trying to make people aware of the other side of it. So managers know the, the Billy Dodd situation. Managers know that happens. Know that happens. Robbie Nielsen last season. Yeah. It, it happens. You don't get, oh, but you've done well two months before yeah. previous. Do you think that the, 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 real poten the real potential for boards to act quickly then is because unlike, you know, well, very much like the English Premier League, if you're in danger of dropping out of the Premiership or dropping out of the Championship here in Scotland, maybe not as quite as cutthroat financially, but if you drop out of it, this is a club that's posted significant losses. Yes. And if Inverness go down, you know, you're looking at a club and you're thinking, where are they going to get money from? You know, they're praying that they draw Celtic and Rangers in a cup match. Yep. But that, that comes that comes over... Like the, the board said that the, that the manager's not getting the best out of the players, <coughs> right? That's at least that's an explanation and to why they've let's say pulled the trigger. So it'll be interesting to see who does get that job though. And okay. another person who comes into that category is Callum Davison. Look at the success Callum Davison had yeah. getting the mm -hmm. cup finals. Aye. We sat here and went Europe. You need to move. You need yeah, to move yeah. when your stock when your stock's up um, there. That's when you need to move. But he didn't. He was loyal to the club. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it just shows you. Yeah. yeah. 
loyalty. Um, English Premier League, we did mention Ange Postacoglu. Uh, if I see one more TikTok of 20,000 fans uh, wearing a Spurs top at a train station singing Ange Postacoglu's name, <laughs> I mean, honestly, they are all in love with them, you know. Um, I actually saw on the BBC when Gary meets Ange, everybody's yeah. on an Ange loving at the moment, and, and rightly so, because suddenly he started to sprinkle the gold dust on that team. Yeah, isn't it? Again, it just shows you, you know, how things can change. We sat here last Saturday when it was one nothing. And it was what, no minutes to go? Yes. And Ange Ball had just burst. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then two minutes later, it was back. And yeah. 2 1. It just shows you how. Things can change. Well, you know, the, the, his catchphrase up here was we never stop. Suddenly, he started to adopt the same philosophy down there. And now they're going back through his, his history, him as a player, all the stuff about yeah. his family. Um, and, when and he was to be, growing up. And yeah, stuff all this stuff. Into. And they're loving him. But by the way, uh, I'm not surprised because in my experience of being in his company on more than a few occasions, he liked to laugh. He's good fun. Um, and there is no doubt about it, he cares not a jot for reputations. If he puts the team sheet out and you're not in it, suck it up. <laughs> he's, firstly, he's a lovable guy, real, real nice guy. And a bit like you, having, having met him a couple of times and been in the opposite technical area, um, really nice guy, knows his stuff, got Celtic playing tremendous, um, in tremendous fashion, won the treble. Um, we've got a mutual friend actually when we had them at um, when we played them at Hearts at home I gave him a bottle of whiskey and he, and he thanked me for that so I, I hear he likes his he likes his whiskey as well um, tremendous guy I, I really hope that Spurs go and win a trophy I really do for, for him um, and it'll be good for Scottish football as well after having them in, uh, up here. Yeah, if they win the London derby against Arsenal <coughs> at Arsenal, Ruffy, the roof's going to come off this. I mean, you'll be doing, you'll be doing Piers Morgan, and then, <laughs> and then he'll go over and do, you know, sit downs with everybody across Europe and the world. It'll just go uh, Ange Mania. Well, Ange about, Ball Mania. The, thing about the, <laughs> the, 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 the well, the fortunate thing is they've got a stadium to back it up. You know, it's yeah. a football team with a stadium that should be in cup finals and winning things. Four wins, one draw, unbeaten, second in the table, two points behind Man City. When you're looking for key games that mean the difference, you think about Celtic and Rangers, the North London derby is unbelievable. Here's how it fits into that whole uh, weekend in the Premier League in England. Man City against Nottingham Forest, Crystal Palace, Fulham, Luton against Wolverhampton, Brentford against Everton. It's uh, Burnley taking on Manchester United, Chelsea, Aston Villa, Arsenal, Tottenham, Liverpool, West Ham, Brighton against Bournemouth and Sheffield United against Newcastle. It doesn't get any bigger for the people in North London. They all want the bragging rights and Mikel Arteta, the Gunners boss, is well aware of it. No, winning always helps and uh, maintains the the spirit in the right place. Um, you know, this game doesn't need any motivation. It's the most special game of the season. Um, it's a derby. It's a special moment for all of us, and and we just need to focus on that. Yeah, give us your prediction on that, Ruffy. Well, Arsenal, fantastic result during the week. Yeah. yeah. I think Arsenal might just nick that. Yeah? Yep. Oh, you go, you got the bubbles burst for Ange? Yeah, <laughs> well... It's the headline. Ruffy says bubble <laughs> burst for Ange. Is it? I'm going to go Arsenal. <laughs> Arsenal won. Who won? Yeah. Uh, the real headline is um, I'm gutted Ange never bought me a bottle back by Lee McCulloch. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, uh, what are you going with this North London derby? I think Arsenal are an amazing team in forum. I'm going to go for narrow. Arsenal win. Yeah, okay, I'm going to go for, I'm going to stick with Ange on this one. I'm going to go for Arsenal 1, Tottenham 1. In fact, let's go 2-2. Two, two. I think there's going to be, I think it's going to be a goals fest. Arsenal 2, Tottenham 2. Whether it works out that way or not is absolutely unbelievable. Um, and of course, uh, listen, uh, Spurs, if they could stay up there in that top four position, that really would elevate them to, you know, another level. The one great thing about it with any of these clubs is they, they always say they want them to play a particular way. And, you know, Arsenal's very symptomatic of that. They, they look back at the Invincibles, they look back at Arsene Wenger in the early years and want them to play that specific way. One thing I noticed, by the way, I don't know if you're on this, but Mikel Arteta, if he comes out with some kind of, you know, miracle water, 
that keeps him looking exactly as he did when he signed for Rangers. That hair uh, is not jet aged, black, isn't, isn't it? it? He's not aged either, his face. Um, he's what a player he was. But by the way, what a manager he's turning out to be as well. I think he's learned a little bit for Pep and all the managers he's, he's worked under before, like Alex McLeish, um, when he was at Rangers as well. That was meant by a joke. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I got it. Yeah. <laughs> It's that seat. It's that seat. It's the seat. I'm not sitting here again. Yeah, exactly. I preferred you here by me on my, my left side. I could see when the tackle was coming in. <laughs> but uh, by the way, just before we go, um, of course, we love talking about fo football. We absolutely love it. Ruffy, it would be remiss of me not to mention to you because I don't like to hide anything from you. Um, but it's now getting to the point where um, Lee's almost becoming last pick at the fives because he's he's, he's in five he's in five he's in five defeats in a row. I mean, you could let that slide. Could oh, I can't let it go. I mean, honestly, I, you know, I just thought to myself. I, I thought in week one, I thought, oh, I've got I've got Lee here. We'll win. A couple of ball players, you know. Uh, he's a good ball player as well. Um, and then I thought. We're definitely going to win. Has it really reached the embarrassing stage when he's last pick? It, no, no, what is? Has it? What is? No, 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 it hasn't. You, 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 you can actually tell. I know where I fall in the category, right? And I look and I say to myself, well, they'll pick Boyd first. They're definitely picking Fad, McFadden because he's a genius. He's getting better as a goal. Yes, he is. I mean, he's just outrageous. And then I think to myself, you know, Lee capped for Scotland, brilliant for Rangers and Wigan. So you're thinking Lee, Faddy, Boydy. And then after that, it's just the dross. It's just us all making up the numbers. But now, but now, now you're getting to listen. I'll just, I'll just leave that boy as an over thirty caps for Scotland. I'll take, I'll take, Jerry, I'll take Jerry McCabe. At least we'll keep the ball. Anyway, as you, as you keep saying each week, it's bound to turn. It will turn. Yeah, it will turn. Absolutely. I we'll can't keep, wait to it turn. Yeah, absolutely. Neither can I. Um, we'll keep you up to date uh, with that. But we'll also. Uh, keep you up to date with the predictor because Ruffy I have to say the predictor we're not doing too well there's there's a few people who are absolutely blowing us out of the water proud Scott um, is John McLean uh, he's getting a prize sent out to him for winning it last month he's been out in front for forever and a day yeah, well, I've had a wee run last week. I had three correct scores, so I jumped about 100 places last yeah. week. So, Jeez. considering there's about 500 people in it. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, you can join it. You can join it at any time, by the way, and you can pick up monthly prizes. And there's an overall end of season prize. Two people coming to the PFA Scotland Player of the Year Awards with us at our table certainly will be enjoyable. Um, so, uh, with that in mind, don't forget the predictor. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button to PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. We've got so much variety in programme for you and lots of big names coming up in interviews hopefully uh, you will join the football family as we grow bigger and better this season giving you all sorts of programs for you to watch and it's all for the love of football from Lee Ruffy and myself Peter Martin have a great weekend watching Scottish football get out to a game if you can and support your team and enjoy it and come home safely and we will see you on Saturday and not only with the preview Lee and Ruffy are joined Adam Benny for tomorrow morning's preview at nine uh, um, but I'll be here with Davy McKinnon and Ali Graham in the studio for the results show tomorrow at quarter to four. Hopefully you can join us then on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.